if you drive out into the outer suburbs, you're bound to run into a new housing estate. They are absolutely everywhere. The big construction companies built them in mass so cheaply that enabled a lot of first home buyers to enter the property market. That's fantastic. But the big question is, can you renovate and sell them and make a profit? I've been called in by homeowner Louise, who's at a bit of a crossroads. She's got an old project home. She doesn't know whether she should renovate and sell or hold on to it for the long term. To make matters worse, a brand new housing estate is going up just two k's away, and that's not great for her. So the pressure's on, I'm gonna go check it out. I'm Cherie Barber, a full-time professional renovator and educator. For almost three decades, I've personally renovated well over 100 properties. And the one thing I've learned is, no matter if the market is booming or busting, there's always an opportunity to make money. So get ready, Australia. I'm hitting the road to help home buyers all over the country learn the secrets behind renovating for profit. Give me a hug and a kiss, it's no your worries. thing to do. Yes, it is. First impressions, yeah. what a great house. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, look, it is. It's a great little home. Well, it's in its original it's... condition, so. Yeah, well, you know yeah. what? The old girl has stood the test of time. Yes. You know, it looks like it's got great bones. First impressions are really good, but there's definitely a couple of issues that stand out to me. Corner block, I'm not so happy with, yeah. but we can't change that. It is what it is. The suburb is really nice. The only problem here is all the houses look the same. They do, yes. So, if you're thinking of selling, we need to make sure that your property looks a little bit different. Okay. So what I'd love to do is I'd love to see the inside yeah. and then we'll talk strategy. Excellent, all perfect. Right. Okay, take me in. Thanks. Louise's home is a really good size with three bedrooms, one bathroom and an ensuite. She's got two separate living areas, an open plan kitchen, laundry and a toilet. So Cherie, this is my home. Wow, wow it's big. It is quite big. This is the formal dining area. Well, what? The formal, formal dining room that nobody in Australia that, no. actually uses anymore. Exactly. I'm always looking for problems that have the potential to suck money out of my budget. Things like water damage that I don't know about. So far, I can't see any issues. This is the kitchen. So kitchen child. Yep. Wow, it's big. Yeah. But everything's in the right locations. You got lots of bench space. Yes. Don't like this at all. This is dating your kitchen right now, this angled breakfast bar. Yes. And obviously all the cabinetry and the bench top, everything's really old and dated. Yeah, yeah. Appliances all look good. Yeah. That's a little bit old. Yes. But all in all, good kitchen. A yep. little bit of money to drop here. Okay. So okay. your lounge room. So, yeah, so this is the main living area. I like that it's open plan. Mm. But And yeah, buyers love that. Yeah. You've got the old vertical drapes, they're criminal. Yeah, I know. I always say whoever invented vertical drapes, they seriously should have been sent to yeah. jail. Yeah. They're criminal. Yeah. All right, so loving this space. Excellent. You, you open the front door, you transition through to that yeah. funny formal dining room, kitchen, lounge room. So this is all making sense to me. The living areas are looking great. The bedrooms are too. They've got wardrobes, ducted air conditioning. So, so far, so good. Louise, what's this room here? Yeah, this room here is the study. The study? Yeah, I'm hoping we could put a wall in here and close it in and make it a fourth bedroom. If we do that, that's going to cost less than $2,000, all said and done. We're going to have to change some of the electricals around and light switches, yep. but that is two grand well spent. Excellent. All right, that's a done deal. Good. Adding a bedroom is a guaranteed way to add value with only the bathrooms to go. Fingers crossed they're looking good. Toilet, big vanity, yep. nice mirror. Everything's in good condition. The tiles. I know. So yes. you've got two big bathrooms, a laundry, and a separate toilet where all the floor tiles have got to be ripped up, re waterproofed. That is 10 grand minimum for waterproofing, tiling. Yeah. Such a shame because up until this point, it was a relatively easy renovation. You like a challenge though, don't you, Sheree? <laughs> You know what I say, problems? Or eat them for breakfast. Yeah. All right. <laughs> In our case, it might be breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> 
To fully renovate the inside, Louise needs to spend $40,000. We want to give her place a modern neutral feel, and we can achieve that by adding timber flooring, clean white walls, and soft, beautiful curtains. We'll also update her kitchen with a new colour scheme, doors and bench top. And in her bathrooms, we're going to keep things really simple and save some money by tile painting the wall tiles. But unfortunately, the floor tiles will need to be replaced. Louise agrees on the inside, but I'm not so confident she's going to agree with what I have to tell her next. The outside for me is the big problem child. Mm. Okay, I'm going to shock you now with what <laughs> I think you should do. You ready for it? Yeah. Would you agree your house looks like every other house in this street? Pretty much. It's a me too? Yes. It's never good to be me too. No. Always stand out. Okay. I think one of the biggest ways to make your home look like a brand new home is to completely cement render the whole house. Wow. Okay. That's... I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. It's the only way you're going to get rid of the red brick. You can paint brick, but it doesn't yeah. look great. Yeah. That's, that's the first part. The okay. second part, your roof is structurally in good nick, it's yeah. faded. Yeah. It's 17 years old, you need a roof spray. Yeah. So, <laughs> I've got a third shock. Okay, yep. I'd love to run a fence all the way down. Now that's normally a lot more than what I would ever recommend, but for you to be able to get the higher resale, I feel you need to do it. I think just doing the inside alone, we're really going to struggle. Okay. But ultimately, it's your money, Louise. Yeah. You have to make the ultimate decision. And I can't guarantee this investment yeah. that you're going to get it back. I can't guarantee it's, you know, in property, nothing is a done nothing deal. Done if it was deal. that easy, everybody would be doing it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. One of the keys to getting buyers emotionally connected with your property is Great Street Appeal. And for Louise to really achieve that, I'm proposing to get the house rendered with white cement render, spray her roof black, and to give it that extra piece of charm, a white picket fence. With her house currently valued at $720,000 and my golden rule of only spending 10%, her budget has crept in at $75,000. Time is definitely money on renovations, so I've set a type deadline on this project in 10 days. We better get cracking. and the skip bins just arrived, so we're about to get stuck into it. Can't wait. If you want to be a renovator, you need to be organised, hardworking, and be able to deal with whatever curveball gets thrown at you. And after telling Louise her budget needs to be 75000 here comes my first curveball. Look, Cherie, that's probably stretching my budget a bit too far. OK. So I don't think... I'm going to be able to stretch it that far, to be honest. All right. Yeah. So how much ideally do you want to spend? 50 is fine, but, yeah, no more than that. OK, so that's quite a big drop. Yeah. On a tighter budget, something's got to go. I'd be really happy to lose the picket fence, but my big thing is keeping that cement render. I know it'll transform that property like nothing else. All right. Yeah. It's 50 grand. You want to knock 25 off the budget. So what do you think you'd want to lose? The rendering. Coming up on Renovating for Profit. I just feel like I'm not doing everything that I should be doing. I'm starting to think whether I should sell. I'm starting to think maybe I need to hold the property. Oh, yeah. disaster. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So how much ideally do you want to spend? 50 is fine, but yeah, no more than that. OK, so that's quite a big drop. Yeah. On a tighter budget, something's got to go. I'd be really happy to lose the picket fence, but my big thing is keeping that cement render. I know it'll transform that property like nothing else. All right. Yeah. It's 50 grand. You want to knock 25 off the budget. So what do you think you'd want to lose? The rendering. Yeah. No. I think that's a huge mistake. The problem is, if you don't do the render on this house, your house is still going to look like a really dated house. That's my fear. I'm not going to force you to spend your money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do worry that you're not going to get your resale. Mm. I hope I eat those words at the end. I think let's concentrate in more internally and let's like do a good job freshening up the, yeah. the facade. And... All right. Yeah. Okay, let's get stuck into it. Okay, awesome. Thanks. Okay. This isn't great news, but Louise needs the budget to go from $75,000 to just $50,000. Let's take off the cement render and lose the fence from the outside. 
We're going to keep the kitchen and bathroom cabinets and only replace the bench top and doors. And the big win is I found a tile sprayer who can spray paint the walls and tiles in the bathrooms. That's going to save us a fortune. Now it's time to get super organised. When you're cutting carpet, get yourself a sharp Stanley knife. Okay, so this is the we obviously um, Okay, Louis, so you're a newbie renovator. I am. All right. Very new. I think the biggest thing for most new renovators is they don't know how to project manage their renovation. And this is all your internal works. Yep. That is your external works. Okay. Your house has 390 individual tasks that need to be completed. And we're doing this renovation in 10 days, so you can get that money in your bank account. So when I was told that this renovation would take 10 days, I was gobsmacked. At the end of the day of today, you need to go, OK, these are 30 tasks to be done today. How many of those tasks got completed? If you only got 10 of the 30 completed, there's a major issue on site. Yeah. If you're getting close to 30 out of 30, things are running smoothly. It's a bit overwhelming. I'm trying to keep up. I hope I'm, I'm doing a good enough job. Now that our budget is reduced, staying on time is absolutely critical. Every day that it blows out costs us money. Found something that maybe you mightn't be aware of. Yeah. The carpet in here is laid on concrete slab. Tiles. <gasps> oh no! Ugly tiles on all the floors through the living areas. Are you kidding me? Some tiles come off really easy. Some are just like a nightmare, and we may even have to get a floor grinder. Yeah. Tiles throughout the whole living room is going to cost us time and money that we simply don't have. Only room that hasn't got the tiles is in the formal room in the front there. Yep. If you left all the tiles, pack that area up and put the floating floor over the top. I reckon that's a brilliant idea. Well, that's one of the big things, is not, not just getting your tiles I'm up. I'm going to kiss you and you. <laughs> <laughs> Renovating can be stressful with constant problems that you have to deal with. And on day two, Louise is definitely starting to feel the pressure. I'm not prepared for the pace that we're moving at. It's going pretty quickly. I just feel like I'm not not doing everything that I should be doing. We have to give him an answer in a couple of hours. Okay. Please! Yep. At the moment, I run in and Cherie will just tell me, you've got to go do this, quick, go and do that. And I, I come back into the office, <laughs> basically, to go place orders. Let's skip it. Oh. Okay, number one. Flooring down, perfect. Alright, come on, it's happening. Huh? Okay, so the power of paint, it can't be underestimated. It is liquid gold for renovators. And today we need to make some big decisions about colour choices. So the painters are gonna finish the ceilings today. We really need to pick these colours today, like okay. now. Because yep. we're gonna have to go and get all of the paint this afternoon so that the painters aren't standing around doing nothing tomorrow. Okay. Cherie and I were sitting down today looking at colours and we were deciding what, what paint we're going to use on the interior walls. So what I recommend, Louise, is that we do go a lighter colour scheme, particularly because you've got low ceilings here. They're only 2.4. Mm -hmm. What we can do is we can go lighter on the walls and we'll bring in some wallpapers okay. and we'll also paint some darker feature walls. So you've got some personality, but it's not really dark. You don't want to paint all the walls dark here because it would enclose the space. Okay. Choosing a colour can be the hardest decision for any renovator to make. And seeing Louise hasn't done this before, I'm going to put her through a little test. Louise, would you agree that all those colours on the wall look white? Yes. All right, I'm going to do a little trick now. Okay. Stay there. Nice. By adding a contrasting colour under the sample colours, the true colours become more recognisable. 
Can you see now? They all looked very different on the paint swatch. They are all now look the same. That's why yeah. it's so important to test your paint colours on site. Are you surprised at that? Yeah, I wouldn't have even thought to have like test colours and actual paint painted on the walls and see what it looks like. But can you see why it's so important? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Keep my happy. Okay. It's so important to have a happy trade team yep. on site. So I was really happy today to see Louise of her own accord making teas, coffees. It is a fast way to pep up your team, keep the energy high, motivation going. 10 out of 10, Louise. Uh, Sheree, I've got something to tell you. Okay. It doesn't sound good. I, it, it's well, scaring me. I, I, it probably isn't, but I've just spoken to the real estate agent yeah. and he's basically told me uh, that now's not a great time to sell uh, and what we were looking for in regards to price point, uh -huh. he doesn't think we're going to get there. Okay, so what does he think you can get for the property right now, renovated? He's saying mid sevens to high sevens. A oh, disaster. Yeah. <laughs> Oh gosh, at 720000 with a 50 grand spend, the project's going to owe us 770000 We are making no profit now. If I'm not going to get the price point that we were expecting mm. when we first said, let's go ahead and sell, I'm actually concerned as to whether, I, I'm starting to think whether I should sell. I'm starting to think maybe I need to hold the property. Coming up on Renovating for This profit. is not called land and houses. Yeah. This is called your enemy. You're just going to have to stay here and do all that stuff for yourself tonight. Well, no, I'm just not going to get done. Just on my own. I've just spoken to the real estate agent yeah. and he's basically told me uh, that now's not a great time to sell uh, and what we were looking for in regards to price point, uh -huh. he doesn't think we're going to get there. Okay, so what does he think you can get for the property right now, renovated? He's saying mid sevens to high sevens. Oh, a disaster. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I understand. So you're um, going to make no profit from this renovation? No. Nah. Basically is what you're saying? If we sell, yeah, we might make... 10 to 20k. You don't spend 50 on a renovation to make 10. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah, I know. That's the definition of lunacy. Yeah, yeah, I understand. I want you to speak to another two agents. Okay. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Okay. Don't take one agent's word as gospel. Okay. If you get another two agents here, which I encourage you to do in the next day or two, yeah. get the agents here. If they're all saying that, then we panic. Yeah. But I think in the meantime, knowing that that could come, we need to now work out, okay, where can we save money even more? Yeah. So this definitely changes the strategy now. We're at the end of day two. We need to go into a major cost-cutting exercise. I need to look at the project plan tonight, put on a real creative hat, think about where I can save money. I'm gonna be on a mission from God. <sighs> okay. Yeah. Today we've got to do a lot of work. The carpenters have to get the laundry rough in finish, electrician needs to finish his bits and bobs, the painters need to start getting into the house and getting all the trims and the walls painted. At this point Louise is on schedule so I hope it stays that way. Rather than replacing the whole kitchen, we're keeping the existing carcasses and just making new drawers, doors and end panels. I'm actually giving the cabinet maker the old doors as saves in having to measure up. There you go. So if you do this, it'll save you thousands of dollars. You might spend a couple of thousand dollars as opposed to 10 or 20,000 replacing a whole new kitchen. Yes. So you've got two big bathrooms, a laundry and a separate toilet where all the floor tiles have got to be ripped up, re-waterproofed. That is 10 grand minimum. Talk about saving money. I found an amazing surface that not only tile paints the walls, but they also do your floors, guaranteeing it for five years. That saved us about $5,000 and two days in renovating time. 
save money in the kitchen and bathroom, I'm not getting a cabinet maker in to make custom cabinetry. That's way too expensive and it's not going to be in your budget if you're renovating for profit. So instead we're using the flat pack system. Now I'm getting my carpenter to install it but anybody can do this. It comes in a wide range of colours and it's super practical. Good job Paul. Thank you very much. Now, if you want to get a good indication for your property before you sell, get multiple agents out to your property. The more opinions, the better. Louise is taking the agents through now. I hope we get some really good feedback. So, in terms of uh, pricing, where do you, where would you price this property once the renovation's fully finished? Yep. Look, well, based on what you've told me and what I've seen, I would be thinking going to market at a figure of seven ninety nine to eight hundred and forty nine thousand. I'm really happy with that. <laughs> so. That makes me happy. Yeah. <laughs> that will make Cherie happy as well. I'm happy with the agent feedback, but it's what the agent said about the kitchen that's really got me worried. So I spoke to the real estate agent and he thought having a stone bench top in the kitchen would just be a real like massive selling factor. Yeah. He doesn't think, it, it might not get us more money in, in terms of resale value, but it, what he's saying is that buyers are going to expect a stone bench top in yeah. here and he's, he just thinks it's going to attract more buyers into the property. Stone will definitely add value to your property for a higher property value. It will cost her more money and the big question now is, can we get stone bench tops made and installed in two days? That's a hard one. Your backyard's looking so much better, just taking away some of the ugly stuff. Yeah. It's day four and I'm now turning my attention to the two big trees that are separating the pergola from the backyard. You're in love with these olive trees. It's the Italian oh, yeah. kind of out in you, isn't it? <laughs> it's like, oh. Um, we can trim them <laughs> and make them nicer looking. Oh, <sighs> but can we keep them? I'm not even going to try and talk this one out. I'm going to bring in the big guns. Or maybe I should say big muscles. All right, tradies. All right, stand here. <laughs> These two trees, should they stay or go? Go. Sami, do you think these two trees should stay or go? Stay. I think they should go. Yeah! <laughs> 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 I love my tradies. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> fellas. <laughs> Salmon, you suck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> To sell a property, you need two things, a good agent and an even better property stylist. The outcome of your styling will be as good as your brief. So let's go through on a room by room basis so you can learn how to do it. Okay. Engaging the property stylist early means you give them time to get all their pieces together that they need to make your home look its absolute best. So Louise, can you see how important it is to property style if you're selling? Yeah, yeah, I can understand the power of, well, it's not something that I knew a lot about before, but yeah. I can start to really envision the power of having really great styling in a home. Well, because presentation is key, it gets more people to your door with the online photos. Yeah. They can physically see the scale of furniture and function of the space. Plus, it kind of detracts from any imperfections and adds that wow factor that gets people in love with the home. If you've got any chance of pushing the property up to 850, it's going to be property styling alone. Yeah. Even though we haven't rendered the house, painting the roof and only part of the upper sections of the house has really lifted the street appeal. Next step is to tackle that ugly green fence. Okay, Louise, we need to tackle your fence. It's looking rather sad. A buyer's not going to appreciate this. I'm not 100% sure if I'm selling yet, though, Cherie. The decisions that you make between a renovating to sell versus a renovating to rent project are wildly different. She needs to work out what she's doing. Some changes you make to a property if you're renting, some changes you make if you're selling. So mm. I'm going to do something. I'm going to take you somewhere yeah. to help you make this decision because you've got to know. You can't be just leave it to the end. Yeah, OK. All right, come with me. Coming up on Renovating for Profit. This is not called land and houses. Yeah. This is called your enemy. You're just going to have to stay here and do all of that stuff for yourself tonight. Well, no, I'm just not going to get done. Just on my own. Do you want to knock 20 grand off the budget? Pretty much. So what do you think you'd want to lose? The rendering. OK, so what does he think you can get for the property right now, renovated? He's saying mid-sevens to high-sevens. Oh, yeah. disaster. Yeah. <laughs> this is the fastest way for anyone to waste time and money. And on day five, she really needs to get her strategy straight once and for all. 
I'm not 100% sure if I'm selling yet, though, Sheree. All right, OK, you need to decide this. Like, to be making changes to a property, some changes you make to a property if you're renting, some changes you make if you're selling. So mm. I'm going to do something. I'm going to take you somewhere yeah. to help you make this decision because you've got to know. You can't be just leave it to the end. Yeah, OK. All right, come with me. When you look over here, what do you see? Potential houses and vacant land. OK. This is not called land and houses. Yeah. This is called your enemy. It's there. Your enemy is there. There. On my doorstep. There. 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 Yeah. There. As far as the eye can see, you've got thousands of houses going in here. Yeah. Housing estates are amazing for people achieving a dream and owning a home. They deliver high quality houses at affordable prices by turning huge lots of vacant land into sprawling suburbs. But if supply outweighs demand, then resale values can really take a huge You've hit. You've got to make a decision whether you're selling or renting. For yeah. me, you've already got fantastic capital growth. You're manufacturing that last chunk of equity in the property in the renovation. Yeah. All of this going around you will yeah. continue to pull your price down. It's not going to appreciate. I think you make a pretty valid point that if I, if I held onto this house, I'd just be parking my money. Exactly right. Yeah. I think you're right. I think it's time to sell. Yep. So are you going to sell? Yeah, I think I am. Louise has finally made the decision to sell. Happy days. The property stylists are coming tomorrow, and now it's full steam ahead to getting as many tasks crossed off that project management list. A fresh coat of paint is definitely the easiest and cheapest way to make an impact. But if you're looking to take your place to the very next level, wallpaper could just be the answer. In two hours, two feature walls complete. So it looks like within the next couple of hours, Louise, you're going to have a kitchen. Because we kept the bathroom and kitchen cabinets in place, all we have to do is attach the new doors and voila, everything is starting to come together. But my biggest fear might be coming true. Louise is on the phone trying to find those stone bench tops. It's just a what he said. He said he could do it in one day. No stone bench tops means we can't install the tiles in the kitchen splashback. We can't fit the sink. It means trades will be standing around. It does nothing more than cost us so money. I'm not sure. We've still got those laminates that we've paid for. So if we need to use them, you know, we've got them. Hey Louise, I think your bench tops are here. Yay. The bench tops have arrived, which is fantastic. <laughs> 10 out of 10, guys, you're now my favourite bench top suppliers. This yeah, next time, we'll try and give you more than two days' notice. I added $300 in the project plan for a construction clean. That's where you get a team of cleaners in right at the very end of your renovation, before the styling comes in, to make your property spick and span. Because we're a little over budget, Louise has cut it out. So now I'm the cleaning lady as well. OK, Louise, the stylist came out a few days ago, and when she came out, the property was pink and beige. Yep. So what I've done is I've just whipped around, I've taken photos of every room, I've texted them through to her so she can see, OK, this is how it's progressed, yep. and she can pick all the items from the photos. Okay. So every time you do a renovation, just try and get into the habit. And obviously, the sooner you can send the photos, the better. Yep. It's the very last day before all the property styling arrives tomorrow. There's a heap of tradies on site. They're fitting and installing absolutely everything. Louise's dad is even here here and he's getting the garden into really good shape. But at the end of the day, even though we're doing a lot, it's simply not enough. All right, I need to make you aware of what we've got to do. 
We've got to clean this whole entire house. Yeah. We've got to sweep the floors. Yeah. We've got to mop the floors. We're going to have to run the brooms and dust all the skirting boards. Yeah. We have to pull all the blinds down and dust the window seals. In the kitchen, we need to scrub all the splashback tiles. We need to scrub down all of the kitchen bench. We need to wipe out all of the kitchen cabinets. In the bathrooms, we've got to wipe down the benches. We've got to clean the mirrors. We've got to clean the vanities. We've got to wipe out the bath. We've got to clean the shower screens. We've got to hang the curtains. Then we have to do the final coat on the skirting boards. Skirting boards can't be done until all of the cleaning is done. And we've got to paint your front door and the back and front door step with the paving paint, which is a final step. Right. So do you feel comfortable doing all of that stuff yourself tonight? Nope. I don't. You're just going to have to stay here and do all of that stuff yourself tonight? Well, no. I mean, like, it's not going to get done. Just on my own. Yeah. So, yeah. In renovations, there can be moments where your renovation gets really overwhelming. And for Louise, that moment is now. There's a lot of work to be done and there's no money in the budget to bring extra labour. So for Louise, she has a long night ahead. There's only so much you can do with the hours that you've got in the day. Oh look, yeah, absolutely you're pushed to the limits when it's a 10 day flip. At the end of the day, if absolutely everything's not done tomorrow at 7am, I'm sure we can clean around some of the furniture at some points, but I'm gonna try and make sure most things are done. It's day 10 of the renovation, the property stylists are in, they're working their magic. We're finishing off the very last details to make sure the home is a really good quality level. Call it organised chaos. Before choosing a property stylist, make sure you see their work and give them a really tight brief. If you get those two things right, you're going to get great results. This is my favourite part of the renovation. Rip it off. We rip it off. And throw it in the bin. I shall do. <laughs> oh, you don't do it like that. You go like this. <laughs> Coming up, with all the hard work done, the place is ready for its oh, first open wow. for inspection. What do you think the buyers will think? But did we hit the mark? In Sydney's Outer West, Louise took on the challenge to renovate her project home for a profit. It's been an emotional ride, and as a first-time flipper, Louise can now stand back and look at what she's achieved. It's taken us 10 days to transform Louise's home from a me to to look at me. The first thing we wanted to do was street appeal, and by taking away the mustard colour bricks and spray painting the roof, Louise's home really does stand out. but it's the inside that really makes an impact. In the kitchen, we replaced the doors, tiled the splashback, and added a stone bench top to really move it into the 21st century. Throughout the living space, timber floors and white walls give it a sense of space while the feature wallpaper adds that extra layer of dimension. We saved a lot of money by tile spraying the floor and wall tiles, and like the kitchen, we only replaced the doors and bench tops. Add the new fittings and these rooms really come alive. Each of the bedrooms has got new carpet, curtains and a feature wall. We also transformed the office to a fourth bedroom. Louisa's final renovation budget came in at 58000 all said and done for materials and trade labour. That means her break-even point is 778000 now it's time to get the real estate agency in to think what they can do with the property and its resale value. 
Yep, they've nailed it. Kitchen? Love it. So much natural light, it's just beautiful. What do you think the buyers will think? They're gonna love it. They're gonna love it. They're gonna love it. Yep. They're gonna be blown away just like us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, sold, sold, sold. Yes. <laughs> That's what we're here for. Yep. Look what you've done with the floors. Yeah, they're great. They've been professionally reglazed, the floor yep. and wall tiles, rather than ripping them all out. Whoever buys this doesn't have a cent to spend. Yes. Mm. All been done for them. Yep. I agree. What do you think? You actually make me want to buy it. It's you lovely. Want to buy it? It's lovely. You know, you've done everything right as a renovator when the real estate agent says, I want to buy your house. That's a good sign. Are you pressure, in the market? Pressure, 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 pressure. <laughs> Okay, so now that you've seen it, where do you think the money's sitting at? Fully finished. I am still feeling on the market price range seven ninety nine to eight forty nine. If we do have the right combination of a couple of buyers fighting it out to yep. the end, mm -hmm. there's nothing to say it couldn't get to the top or even break through the top. I think it's really achievable and I can see my agents in my office fighting to get this one sold. Really, I can. Yep. Louisa, my work is done now, but yours begins. So thank you guys, we appreciate it. Thank you very much. Here's thank you so much. Sale. Thank you. Thank you. We'll save the champagne thank to the end, thank hey? Yep. Yep. Let's go. <laughs> no worries. I know the buyers are going to really love this house. I just hope they're lining up to see it, even in a declining market. Open house. It's time to see if we got it right. We renovated this place for two markets. The growing family looking for those extra bedrooms and a yard. And the downsizers who want everything on one level. And that's exactly who's come to take a look. Beautiful, it's very open and light and fresh. It's really, really nice, very modern. Oh, it's lovely, beautifully presented, and um, yeah, very easy to um, see ourselves in here. We're very, very impressed with the home. Everything you could want for it is in the home in there. Really positive feedback from the real estate agents and good open house numbers are a really great start. But unfortunately, in the media headlines, it's a property bloodbath. Property prices are declining at a really rapid rate. Can the real estate agents convert interest into contracts? If Louise can't sell her house, she'll have no option but to rent. It's been three weeks since Louise finished her 10-day renovation and spring has completely changed the look of the street. It's beautiful. With healthy numbers so far for her open house days, I'm returning to see Louise, who's been called for a meeting by her real estate agent. So Louise, the agent is on the way. Apparently they've got their best and final offer. How are you feeling? I'm a bit nervous, to be honest. What would you sell at today? Uh, over 820. Okay. Yeah. We're on the market. Okay. Yeah. All right. So if the agent brings in an offer that's under 820, does that mean you're going to rent the property from this weekend? If it doesn't sell, look, I may even move into it for a short period of time, okay. you know, because and instead of renting it out. Well, it's always good to have an exit, like a plan B. Yeah. So it's good that you've got that option. You're not forced to sell in this market. That's no. a really dangerous position. Yes. So let's see what he says. You'll be here any second now. The agent is coming with an envelope in what he calls his best and final offer. The property styling is also being ripped out in the next couple of days. So I'm hoping and praying for Louisa's sake, the offer's a good one. Hey. Hey, how are you going? Thanks for coming, come Thank on you. in. How are you guys? Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for coming. Hey. Hello. Good to see you again. Andrew and Michelle. Nice to see you. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Andrew. Hi again, how are you? We're happy to see you. Yeah. Hopefully it's some good news, hey? Yes. What have you got for us, Pinky? <laughs> the agent is here and he has the big envelope. I'm so nervous for Louise. My heart is jumping out of my skin and it's not even my property. All right, guys, so we're pretty nervous to see what's in that envelope. Yes, uh, it's been a very, very eventful few weeks. Yeah. Uh, we gave it our absolute best with our marketing efforts and photos and, and the whole shebang. Mm. 
and that has produced 39 different groups through the door. That's good for a, like a market that's really crap. Yeah, that's that good. Is, yeah. That is, yep. Um, so I really do feel that what I have in this envelope that we have knocked it out of the park oh, based on the current you climate. Some of it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, without any further ado. Yeah. Oh, Sheree. This is the moment of truth. <laughs> Oh, good work guys. Oh, Amazing. Well, yeah. That is absolutely brilliant. You happy? Yes, yes I am. So happy that we, we got 826,000 which is awesome. We walked into this thinking if we can walk out with 820 and above, we're doing great. told me that's $46,000 profit in 10 days, which is unreal. Like, I, there's no way I could have saved $46,000 in 10 days, tax-free. So, I'm, I'm stoked. Your first million? Yeah. Six weeks ago, I got a phone call from Louise who had never renovated anything. She had a house that was valued at $720,000 that was looking pretty daggy and dated. She's now walked away with a $46,000 profit margin and because she lived in it, no capital gains tax. You've got to be happy with that. I know the skills that she's learned on this renovation are going to serve her well for her very next project. As for me, it's time now for me to go help somebody else renovate for profit.